Awesome. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're going to keep it going with another technical workshop here. Got Karen Shaler. He's a data scientist at AnyBlock Analytics. AnyBlock Analytics is one of the first chain link node operators, huge in our ecosystem. Really love working with them. Uh, Karan, uh, thank you a lot for joining us. I know it's late. It's uh, 11, almost 11 p.m. where you are. So really appreciate you being flexible and excited to uh, uh, see this, this demo that you'll be doing, and it'll be with Python. Um, so everyone enjoy. If you have questions, definitely drop them into the chat as well. Thank you very much, Keenan. Yep. So I'm Karan Jala. I'm a data scientist at AnyBlock Analytics. We, and I'll be giving a technical demo of uh, what you can do with with our data in the and and I'm going to be doing it specifically in the Chainlink universe. Uh, hello. I'm going to be doing this in a Jupyter notebook, uh, mainly with with a lot of Python code, and I'll, I'll we'll follow along. Um, I'm not going to run it live. I ran it uh, ahead of time because it takes quite a while, but um, I'll walk I'll walk you guys through it. So about any block, we are a data provider, a blockchain solution provider based out of Mainz in Germany but we're an all remote company. We are 16 people strong now, uh, spread out across the European time zone slash Africa slash, yeah. So um, we have some guys in Bulgaria, in Morocco, in Nigeria, and then a lot in Germany as well. Um, we offer multiple things. So uh, our, our main business is offering data and tools and infrastructure to interact with, with, with blockchain. Uh, various blockchains. We index a lot of blockchains and provide that data in our AnyBlock index. And that's what I'm going to be using now. So I'm going to be using our RPC and I'm going to be using our indexing uh, with, with Elasticsearch. Uh, you, we also offer SQL, but um, I, mainly I use Elasticsearch because it's very powerful in the way it can aggregate and prepare data. Uh, we also, as Keenan mentioned, are a Chainlink node operator, and that's why we work a lot with Chainlink. And I work a lot with analyzing data in Chainlink, mainly the uh, providing accounting solutions uh, for, for other node operators. We received a grant for that about half a year ago um, to, to work on that, and we're now in the process of moving it uh, into uh, supporting multiple chains, so, so layer two solutions as well. We are, as a node operator, we're, we're operating on Ethereum, we're operating on XDAI, BSC, Optimism, and, uh, and Avalanche. Uh, so we have, we have quite a lot of, uh, we're working on quite a lot of things here, um, but I'm a data scientist and I mainly work well with Jupyter Notebook and our dashboards. So let's jump into it. This is, uh, this is kind of what I do at any block analytics. I prepare dashboards. Uh, we recently uh, added EIP fifteen fifty nine to 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 our backend, so so everything's compatible now, and also to our dashboards. So this is part of our gas dashboard, where we uh, per, where we added base fee and and the amount of gas saved or the amount of ETH saved uh, by by switching over to the new standard. Uh, we also well, we also recently prepared a, a dashboard for specific tokens such as Lido and uh, staked ETH. Uh, yeah, but uh, let's start. So, like I said before, we need Elasticsearch, and uh, it's it for for the people who haven't used it before, it's. Uh, Quite simple once you get the hang of it. So at the beginning, it might be a bit, it might take a bit uh, getting used to, but after a while, you really, you, you can really start knocking out queries quite quickly. Um, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be monitoring, well, we're going to be analyzing the growth of Flux Monitor and off chain reporting jobs. Uh, which ones are the most active? How has the efficiency increased uh, by switching over to OCR? And how many node operators there are actually are? Uh, let's start off. We're going to be using a whole bunch of uh, packages. I mainly use uh, Arrow for, 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 for time. And actually, some of these we don't need. Um, but I had them in there anyways. I'm going to be starting a year ago, so 365 days, to analyze the growth of Flux Monitor and OCR. So once OCR jump um, pops up, 
uh, you'll see that uh, flux is actually used much less and it's being phased out slowly. And, and you also see all the benefits of, of OCR. Uh, to set up, we're gonna have to connect to the Elasticsearch index indexes um, and we're gonna be connected to Ethereum. Like I said before, we have multiple blockchains that we're indexing, including XDAI, uh, BSC, Energy Web, um, and uh, et cetera. We also have Bitcoin and, and uh, we're moving, well, we're, I think we're expanding into, uh, we're, we're supplying BSC soon, and Bitcoin Cash as well. So, so quite a few to connect to, but of course, Ethereum is the most interesting. Uh, this is how we connect. We're also going to be using the, the ABIs for the chain link contracts for Flux and OCR so that we can actually understand them and decode the data and, and turn it into human readable data. Great. So node operators, there's quite a few of them. So we're going to be fetching them. Uh, this is, this is uh, from, a, from a central uh, JSON file. So, and... Uh, this is how we're going to be fetching all the data on chain. This is the only data that I've actually um, prepared beforehand. The rest we're going to be getting all, uh, from directly from the chain. We have 52 node operators here that we're working with. And we fetch all of these by with, with this Elasticsearch query. Um, this is how it works. Here's the, the just this is the whole query, and we put it in our transaction index. Uh, we, we pop in the list of node operators. Um, oh no, actually we pop in the, the yeah, we pop in the, the list, the node addresses of all, all the operators. And then we uh, pop it out as a data frame. This is the function actually getting all the data off the, directly off the chain. So what I've, I've done is I've, I told it to grab all transactions that are interacting with these node operators and classifying them into either Flux Monitor or OCR. And these are all error messages that we're getting from our RPC call, um, our RPCs, uh, where we aren't interacting with a job, but with something else. So it doesn't go through, but it collects all the, all the ones that we actually want. So if we take a look, these are all the Flux jobs that we collected. So there's a lot. Chainlink has grown quite strongly. And you'll see later how many, um, well, how strongly it's been growing. But uh, this is the list that we're going to be working with, with Flux Monitor jobs. There are 294 of them. Uh, I don't know if that is up to date now, but um, because there are a few beta ones, I think, I'm not certain. But uh, we'll be doing the same thing for OCR. So the same type of query. But now we need to actually get the OCR node, ad, uh, the OCR address um, of the individual node operators, uh, because it works well. Of course, it works differently. And uh, if, for those of you that don't know what the difference is in Flux Monitor, uh, the node operators essentially agree on chain, um, and in OCR, it's what it stands for is off chain reporting. They agree externally, so I'm sorry, they agree off chain through TCP/IP, I believe. And then one of them is selected randomly or it, it, it cycles through and one of them uploads it to, to the chain. So it uses significantly less gas and uh, it's, yeah, it's more efficient that way. It clogs the network less and you'll see soon um, how much more efficient it is. So we fetch all of these keys. This is the same thing again, OCR. There's not as many, there's only 111 here. But uh, uh, that's growing quickly. Here we also, this is what we fetch with our RPC. This we get directly from the chain using the ABI uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it fetches the, the description. So this is BZRX to ETH. Uh, the version is the type, of, mm, the, the type of contract it is. So whether it's Flux Monitor or OCR. I think OCR is four and uh, Flux Monitor is three. And then we also get the block number where it was created. Great. And now after we've gotten the list, this is our uh, well, our function for, for fetching the, this is the, here are our aggregations. So we go directly onto our transaction index and we get gas data and we get, uh, we, we put it in, in histogram buckets. 
uh, so we get it on a daily basis. We're getting transactional data. We're collecting how many transactions are, uh, uh, that occur on every day. And this is all supply side data. So we're only, we're only actually working with node operators here. Uh, we're not working with the demand side. So whoever is querying these prices, whoever wants to, to, to get chain link price feeds, we, we aren't working with that. We're working with the supply side. So just uh, so, so we're going to be analyzing the transactions from the supply side. Yeah. And this is what comes out. We've got each job address uh, for Flux. There's a total of 57,000 entries across all jobs um, over the last year. And we do the same for OCR. And uh, as you see, there's even your Vesper Finance total value locked is also a job. So it's quite interesting all the things that you can see um, directly on chain. All right, now we'll be looking at the growth of these jobs. This is a new query again. So here, um, it's again, starting at the start date, using the job list that we created earlier. Um, and we're going to get the cardinality, so the unique uh, transactions per day. And this is, so this is all the preparatory work. Um, and here's our first graph. These are the active chain linked jobs. So for Flux in blue and OCR in red, we can see it's been growing strongly. This is, but this is the, the reason it goes down. So, so we're not only talking about constantly live, we're talking about on a day-to-day -day basis, how many have been active that day. That's why it goes up and down a bit. Um, but you see the Flux monitor grew a lot, uh, but after OCR came in and that grew much stronger and Flux has actually been settling. Um, and the reason why it's still high is that for, so, so that the, the jobs are still usable and it's backwards compatible, it's still compatible with, with things that have been set up on Flux Monitor, uh, they're still running. So there's still 223, 224 active um, jobs in the past month currently. Uh, drops off on the last day because day was complete when I ran this. So not all have been running, but um, yeah. Moving on. Now we're going to be looking at the jobs individually. So, how many? What, what are what are people most interested in? Because when we're when we're viewing these transactions, these supply transactions, uh, the more they're queried, the more they're uploaded to the chain, right? The more has to be agreed on. And you'll see uh, the Black Swan days uh, had a huge impact on the chain link environment, and you can see that on the supply side because we as node operators had to upload tons of, uh, of, of price feeds on those days. So now we're gonna be grouping the 57,000 flux entries and the 15,000 OCR entries uh, by the description so that we can see it uh, in, in a pie chart. Uh, the biggest job for flux is ETH and USD, which makes sense because that's, what most people are interested in that, uh, that use the, uh, the chain link uh, environment because everything's built on ETH here, right? Or most things are. Now things might be being built on, on layer twos, but that's also still ETH based. Next, naturally, is Bitcoin. But then it's quite interesting how evenly it's spread out. So, so these, uh, there, there's no huge dominance from just one job, which is great to see. It shows uh, that 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 even small jobs are getting lots of transactions and, uh, and are seeing a lot of supply from, from, from node operators. So they're being uploaded no matter what happens. And that's really, really good for, for, for decentralization. So we're still active, even in the ones that aren't in ultra high demand. Yeah. In OCR, it looks basically the same, even though I think it's, yeah. Uh, there's there well of course there's fewer jobs here so the chunks are a bit larger so i would uh, i'd reckon that it's even even more evenly spread out here right so now we're going to be looking at our data over time so over the entire year that we fetched earlier using our elastic search queries and for this we're going to be grouping by uh, the, the 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 time column so instead of viewing jobs individually, we're going to be viewing all the jobs in, in, in well aggregated down to the time. 
uh, at first we're going to be looking just at sums, sum, sums of all the transactions across all jobs and total gas used by all those jobs. And this is what it looks like. As I mentioned earlier, the, well, the, the, the very volatile days here in February, well, January it seems, um, saw a lot of transactions from the node operator side. So us, we as any block analytics, we uploaded a lot of uh, feeds on those days. And here, of course, this is May 19th uh, day. Oh. No, it's actually not. This is the February. Okay, this is the, the, the February, uh, the very volatile day in February, February 23rd, yeah. So in here, this must be May 19th. But yeah, as you can see, May 19th was much, well, you all know May 19th was a, a lot more vol volatile than February. February was big, but here is where OCR really got started getting phased in. And the effect is huge. The way fewer transactions crowded the Ethereum network on those days because of this off-chain reporting. Much, a lot fewer, um, well, much less in gas was paid uh, for, for the transactions on that day, even though it was such a wild day. Great, I'll, we'll be looking at them separately as well. And this is Flux. Like I, I was saying, it's it's quite vo volatile in, in how many tra transactions have to be sent, depending on the volatility of the market, how often it gets queried. Um, and right now, like I said earlier, they're still, they're basically in legacy mode, uh, uploading sometimes, I think once a day, something like that, just so they're still usable, but mainly it's all switched to OCR. And on OCR, you can see it's less, it moves moves up and down much less. There, there are 14,000 transactions compared to, what was it the other one? 120, more 130 on, on, on the most volatile day. But, uh, and, and it doesn't go up and down as much, which is exactly what we want because we want it to be steady. We want it to be stable. And that's, that's good for, for, for the people who are using Chainlink. Uh, we're also going to be sorting it by mean, by the mean, so we can look at uh, uh, look at that. Um, I'll skip over this because, yeah, great. Uh, so this is the uh, stacked 100% uh, bars, and we can see the volatile days in February. OCR hadn't picked up much, but ever since it got moved into 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 legacy mode, they're still pretty much on par with uh, how many transactions are being sent just because of, and, and, and that even though most have moved to OCR, even though OCR is the one that's more, um, well, the, the one that's become the standard for Chainlink now, uh, you can see how efficient they are and that, that they're sending equally as many transactions uh, and cluttering, and, and thus we're cluttering, uh, cluttering Ethereum much less so. And um, this here, I put together the average unique node operators. So we can see that it's quite steady. At first, OCR had, I think there were very few OCR jobs at the time. So, so there were big groups um, deciding. But on average, here we have six, seven node operators uploading data for each OCR job on a daily basis. And that was the same for, for Flux. So, and this goes, this, this, this shows the decentralization of each job, that each job has around eight, um, uh, eight node operators at any time, given time. And OCR is similar. Um, I believe that's, this might be what Chainlink envisioned, that uh, there'd be about eight, um, seven or eight, uh, uploading data on a daily basis to each type of job. And they're managing it quite well. It's quite steady, and uh, there's never, never a huge drop on, on any days where there's fewer people operating, or there's huge spikes because one maybe because because a job might be more uh, profitable, and there's not operators switching to there. No, it's all quite steady here. Yeah, um, that's uh, it for me. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, and you can use our Smart Contract Summit 21 50% off code. I believe it gives 50% off for three months. But of course, our, we, we also have a free mode. So you can query 
as much as any hobbyist or as much as any any anybody testing around needs from 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 our from our indices. Uh, like I said, we have many chains. Go check them out: XDAI, uh, Ethereum, um, and plenty of others. Uh, and uh, we also have RPC, like I said, and you can go query those as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I did while I was preparing this. Thanks for joining me. Awesome. Thank you, Karen. Uh, really, really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's late for you.